Indonesia plans to harness one of the most controversial energy sources by 2045, nuclear power. If it succeeds, it could be the first nuclear-fueled country in Southeast Asia. 2023 kita harus siap dengan SDM, dengan beragam ya, uh, yang terkait dengan kajian-kajian, tapak lah, uh, persetujuan masyarakat dan sebagainya gitu. But is an earthquake-prone nation suited for this? We are not convinced at all that we have solid governance system uh, that can actually manage massive nuclear power plants. Thirty-nine kilometers south of Jakarta lies a facility rarely accessed by the public. This is the GA Siwabesi nuclear reactor, the largest nuclear research facility in Southeast Asia. It's one of the most tightly secure locations in this area. Bagian yang pengoperasian reaktor itu bekerja secara shift ya, 24 jam pengoperasian reaktor. Kemudian bagian perawatan reaktor, ya. Jadi sistem-sistem yang mendukung pengoperasian reaktor ini harus dipastikan bekerja sesuai dengan batas keselamatan. Kemudian selain itu juga ada petugas keselamatan untuk memantau, untuk memastikan bahwa semua batas keselamatan, semua sistem harus selalu bekerja pada kondisi operasi. Dan ditambah lagi petugas pengamanan, khusus untuk petugas pengamanan nuklir. Ya. Jadi ini kesemuanya ini bekerja bertugas sesuai dengan tugasnya masing-masing. Suwoto is in charge of reactor operations. He is among the 130 personnel who are working here at the facility. When operated at full capacity. The Sewa Besi reactor can produce 30 megawatts of electricity. That is the equivalent of what 30,000 Indonesian homes use each day. It uses uranium, a common nuclear fuel. Inside the reactor tank, fuel rods are immersed in water, which acts as a coolant. Nuclear energy is created from what is known as nuclear fission. This occurs when a neutron slams into an atom, causing it to split and release more neutrons. These, in turn, slam into and split other atoms, resulting in a chain reaction. When an atom splits, it releases a lot of energy in the form of heat. This heat is used to create steam, which is then used to spin a turbine in a generator, which produces electricity. But the energy it produces is not for public use. Instead, Sewabesi is one of three nuclear research facilities in Indonesia. It first came online in 1987. It was built to develop nuclear energy in Indonesia at a time when Southeast Asia's most populous nation was quite keen on this power source. The archipelago began exploring the use of nuclear energy in 1954. But the discovery of fossil fuel deposits in Indonesia and reactor meltdowns elsewhere in Chernobyl and Fukushima dampened the enthusiasm for nuclear. Harus selalu diberikan penjelasan, ya, pembelajaran kepada e, masyarakat, ya, tentang apa hasil yang positif, ya, hasil yang bisa dimanfaatkan oleh e, masyarakat. Seperti kita lihat di sini, ya, saya dan ini ya wartawan ini, bapak-bapak, ya, media ini berada tepat di atas bahan bakar. Buktinya dengan adanya 
shielding, pendingin, dan kemudian e, pengaturan. Ya. Ini, ini kita aman di sini, tidak ada radiasi yang menakutkan. 58-year-old Suwoto spent more than three decades working at this nuclear facility. After many years of tepid public enthusiasm, he has recently seen renewed interest in nuclear power. The reason? Climate change. Sehingga apa yang disebut dengan climate change hari ini betul-betul hadir di tengah-tengah kita. Indonesia sebagai negara kepulauan sangat terasa sekali. Hari-hari ini musim tidak sudah tidak bisa diprediksi. Mestinya ada istilah musim kemarau atau musim mareng, ada musim gadu, ada musim hujan, kan begitu. Hari-hari ini tidak bisa diprediksi. Kita hari-hari ini mestinya apa wilayah di selatan Katulistiwa itu adalah kemarau, tetapi bisa kita lihat. Hari-hari ini hujan terus menerus melanda dimanapun. Dan juga terjadi namanya bencana metro hidrologi yang sangat masif di negara Indonesia ini. Karena memang climate change pada dasarnya adalah menghantam negara kepulauan semacam Indonesia ini yang akan banyak mendapat pengaruh. The country of 217 million is the world's eighth largest carbon emitter. Currently, more than 80% of its power generation comes from burning fossil fuels. Coal is the main energy source. Batu bara kita proven risetnya luar biasa, masih kurang lebih 38 miliar metric ton sekali lagi ya, 38 miliar metric ton. Nah, dengan batu bara ini kita sekaligus bersyukur. Kenapa? Karena ini bagian dari energi primer kita meskipun ini kita kutuk kenapa? Karena batu bara penyumbang karbon tertinggi. Since 2004, Indonesia has become a net importer of oil, even though it has oil fields of its own. That's because as Indonesia's population and economy grew, so did its thirst for energy. The International Energy Agency estimates that electricity demand will increase fivefold by 2060. So in the last decade, Indonesia economy growth in average of 5%, and energy has been a key fuel. Electricity is part of every industry input, while the fuel is part of the mobility. And uh, Indonesia economy growth, 55% is on domestic consumption. So logistic is a key, therefore an affordable and uh, also an access of uh, multi-resource energy, multi-source of energy is important. And Indonesia is uh, working on right mix of energy. Indonesia is signatory to the Paris Agreement, an international commitment to fight climate change. It has pledged to cut its emissions by 32% by 2030 with its own resources and to 43% with international support. And more ambitiously, to reach net zero by 2060. Tidak ada opsi kecuali kita harus masuk ke uh, energi baru, energi terbarukan. Bauran energi di, apa, sebagai dalam rencana atau RUEN, rencana umum energi nasional kita, di tahun 2025 mencapai 23 persen energi baru, energi terbarukan. Hari ini belum tercapai, karena dikelistrikan saja baru 12 persen. To cater to rising energy demands and meet carbon targets, a new energy and renewable bill was proposed by the government in June this year. It is expected to be passed by the House of Representatives in November, around the same time that Indonesia hosts the G20 Bali Summit. The bill includes the development of nuclear energy and outlines plans to build a nuclear power plant by 2045. Nuclear is generally considered a carbon-free power source. PLTN pembangkit listrik tenaga nuklir adalah termasuk pembangkit listrik tenaga yang paling yang paling handal. Dia punya 24 jam rutin dalam 360 hari per setahun. Dan seterusnya, seterusnya. Kalau kita melihat tahun 2060, kurang lebih kita kebutuhan kita adalah 400-an giga atau 400 ribu megawatt. Hampir muskil without nuclear. Dia menyimpang dari tata tertib. 
But nuclear's inclusion in the energy bill has met with opposition by some politicians as well as members of the public. When you call about new energy, people will ask questions. What is this new energy? Nuclear is obviously nothing new. It's been around for more than 50 years. So the big question from the public and from the civil society is asking, why does nuclear need to be part of this regulation when the attention should have been more on the renewable energy side? So why is Indonesia considering the nuclear option if there are other sources of renewable energy available? It's Saturday afternoon in Chilele village. Members of a local scout troop gather to prepare for an upcoming jamboree. They practice marching and mingle with volunteers who come from outside the village. Setelah jambore, nanti kita tetap ada pelatihan pramukanya. Biar apa? Biar di kita tuh pramukanya jalan. Di sini ada persamaan juga kan? Chilele village is about 50 kilometers east of Jakarta. Despite the proximity to the capital and Karawang International Industrial City, one of the country's largest industrial estates, the 5,000 people who live here have no access to the electricity grid. Kenapa tidak ada listrik satu? Ini kan walaupun Pohonnya seperti ini kan ini masih masih dalam kawasan hutan. Karena takut-takut kalau listrik masuk ke dalam kawasan hutan, ini akan berubah fungsi. Itu. Kedua, sebagai kami sebagai masyarakat pengarap di sini, ini yang dikhawatirkan, yang dikhawatirkan. Ini nanti kalau listrik masuk, ini perekonomian masyarakat bagaimana? Kan ini rata-rata masyarakat di sini kan di bawah 1 juta per bulan rata-rata penghasilannya. Kalau sekarang bar listrik berapa? Terus gaya hidupnya bagaimana? Nah, itu kan harus dipertimbangkan. Instead, the village relies on these solar panels for electricity. These panels are donated by volunteers who live outside the village. Itu udah panel suryanya. Untuk penerangan di malam hari itu panel suryanya nanti dialirkan ke baterai. Nah, seperti itu. Baterai baru ke masing-masing bolham. Itu rata-rata dikasih lima. Nah, tergantung ya baterainya. Kalau baterainya memang besar, itu poin itunya ya lebih bisa lebih banyak. Tapi kalau memang baterainya kecil, ya paling dua tiga lah itu. Straddling the equator. The Indonesian archipelago is blessed with abundant sunshine. Solar has the potential to be the largest source of renewable energy in Indonesia. For Indonesia, well, our latest calculation, out of 400 gigawatts of renewable energies uh, in Indonesia, uh, half of them, 200 gigawatts, are solar. So it's the largest, the largest capacity of renewables in Indonesia. It's free, it's clean, it can be with conducive investment climate, conducive regulatory framework, with strong political will. It can be expanded very quickly, very, pretty easily. At the Chirata Dam in West Java, Locals are enjoying themselves over the weekend. Not far from the Merrymakers, a 140 million US dollar floating solar plant is being built. The panels will cover an area of 250 hectares on the surface of the dam. When completed, it will be the largest of its type in Southeast Asia with a capacity of 145 megawatts. 
The project is a joint cooperation between PTPJB Investasi, a subsidiary of state electricity firm PLN, and Abu Dhabi-based renewable energy group Mazda. Jadi sembari kita men, uh, sekalian kita mendukung program pemerintah untuk 2025 mencapai bauran energi 23 persen. Saat ini kita masih fokus lebih banyak di pembangunan uh, substation, uh, building uh, office building, kemudian juga transmisi. Dan itu masih kita jalankan. Sembari kita sedang menyiapkan uh, uh, material untuk solar PV, terus kemudian untuk floatingnya, kemudian juga untuk mooring dan uncoring ketika dia dimasukkan ke dalam uh, di atas air sehingga ada penahannya di bawah. Semoga di akhir 2022 ini bisa tetap beroperasi. The floating solar project will boost solar output in Indonesia which in 2021 contributed less than 1% to its power generation, or around 180 megawatts. If the government truly plans to phase out coal, it will have to significantly invest in solar energy. Terbesar kita adalah punya potensi tenaga surya. Di semakin ke timur, sangat bagus untuk uh, mem, apa, membangun tenaga surya. Kenapa? Karena tingkat iridiasi mataharinya semakin optimal, curah hujannya semakin rendah. Dan karena juga semakin timur, mis, misalnya di, mana? di NTT, Nusa Tenggara Timur, itu ada 20, 10 Sumba dan 10 Timur. Itu potensinya luar biasa besar untuk dibangun solar farm. Sumba Island, known for pristine beaches, lies 2,000 kilometers east of Jakarta. It is home to the first privately run solar panel project in Indonesia, operational since 2017. It has a capacity of one megawatt, enough to provide electricity to around 2,000 homes on the island. The plant is operated by Jakarta-based PT Cessna. The company's two other projects are on the island of Flores. But these solar panels highlights one challenge of power generation in Indonesia. Actually, sekarang kita lagi ada rencana untuk ekspansi juga yang bisa sampai um, puluhan puluhan megawatt juga itu kan uh, rencananya gitu contohnya adalah um, apa namanya pemasangan di area yang terpencil itu kan kita harus memikirkan uh, bagaimana uh, kegiatan distribusi atau logistik kan kita gimana caranya untuk mendeliver uh, komponen yang akan kita pasangkan tersebut kan ke ke area-area terpencil itu gitu. The Indonesian archipelago is made up of over 17,000 islands, around 6,000 of which are inhabited. Building new energy infrastructure across such terrain is difficult and expensive. Kemudian uh, selain itu karena di Indonesia ini kita negara kepulauan ya uh, untuk memasang uh, pembangkit pembangkit EBT khususnya di daerah-daerah desa pedesaan itu memang masalah uh, infrastruktur masalah lokasi itu juga menjadi uh, tantangan tersendiri untuk yang energi energi terbarukan yang kita kembangkan di daerah itu sebenarnya memobilisasi peralatan peralatan yang harus kita bawa ke sana itu juga menjadi salah satu kendala. Maintenance of panels that are exposed to the elements can also be a challenge. Solar panels must be kept clean. Otherwise, surface dirt will prevent sunlight from reaching the photovoltaic cells. Kita butuh bantuannya untuk lebih uh, menjaga lingkungannya, maksudnya uh, agar tetap aman. Terus abis itu kita juga butuh support dari masyarakat setempat terkait dengan uh, maintenance-nya dari si PLTS itu kan, karena kan uh, ada apa namanya ada uh, butuh uh, perawatan secara fisik juga, terus kemudian. Um, monitoring performance-nya, energy production-nya, dan lain-lain juga gitu. Back at Chilele village, the scout event has ended. The students begin leaving for their homes before it gets too dark. Allahu Akbar. At 6 p.m., villagers pray in a small mosque lit by bulbs powered by solar panels. 
Then, Oman teaches some youngsters to recite the Quran, supplemented by kerosene lamps. After sundown, the village has to depend on their solar charge batteries to power their appliances. The battery at this wooden house, where 47-year-old Roana lives with her husband, is broken. She turns to kerosene lamps. Roana yearns to watch TV, like the couple's children who live outside the village are able to do. But without power, she will have to miss her favorite Indonesian soap operas. The situation at Chilele village demonstrates another limitation of solar energy. When there is no sun, there is no electricity. Due to intermittency and nightfall, for solar to be viable, it requires a power store. At scale, this means investing in expensive batteries. This is in addition to the cost of land acquisition. Solar farm atau tenaga surya adalah membutuhkan lahan di mana kalau staged di atas tanah online itu kan memang mahal tanahnya karena satu mega kurang lebih membutuhkan sekarang 0,8 hektar tanah sehingga kalau satu giga itu artinya 800 hektar dia perlukan kan mahal kalau untuk di Pulau Jawa. The limitations of solar energy, which extend to other renewables like wind and hydro, explain why the Indonesian government wants to include nuclear in its energy mix. Instead of relying on weather conditions, nuclear plants provide a steady stream of electricity, all while occupying a relatively small footprint. I think uh, from energy security perspective, nuclear energy is a good option to have because uh, it has a very big generation uh, capacity which is currently unmatched by other renewable sources such as wind and solar. So in order to meet rising energy demand, if coal is to be phased out, then nuclear is probably a good option to have on the table in order to uh, meet the energy demands of the Indonesian population. But despite the potential upside of nuclear energy, will Indonesians warm up to living with nuclear? Fukushima, Japan. March 2011. A 9.0 magnitude earthquake triggered a tsunami that struck the main island of Honshu. At the Fukushima nuclear power plant, the tsunami waves surged over defences. Loss of power to cooling systems resulted in meltdowns in three of the nuclear reactors. 150,000 people were forced to evacuate from the area after radiation leaked into the air, soil and sea. More than a decade later, a zone totaling 337 square kilometers remains off limits due to high radiation levels. Around the world, the Fukushima disaster renewed public concerns about nuclear safety. In Indonesia, support for nuclear power fell. Fukushima cleanup cost anything between $200 billion from Japan, Japan official figures to more than $500 billion. So the question is, if such an instance can happen in Japan, what will happen if it happened in Indonesia? This is the big question. If such an incident happened, who will cover the cost? So this hidden cost is what we need to be very careful because the cost may not look, you know, it may not be clear up front. But when something does go wrong, you can destabilize an entire national budget out of a single incident. Indonesia has revitalized talks of pursuing nuclear power. 
A new energy bill lays plans to build the country's first nuclear power plant by 2045. But for critics, the spectre of Fukushima haunts Indonesia's nuclear ambitions. Well, Fukushima, with Japan technologies, which is much more advanced than Indonesia's, what we Indonesia, uh, or, or even other countries, other developed countries, I mean, they, they still experience Fukushima. Uh, the leakage when a nuclear power plant had to face tsunamis, then things collapse. Lennart Simanjuntak heads Greenpeace in Indonesia. The environmental group led protests against nuclear power in 2011 after Fukushima. They currently oppose the inclusion of nuclear in the energy bill. We are not convinced at all that we have solid governance system that can actually manage massive nuclear power plants. We, we have seen in small reactors that we have uh, in Serpong, mismanagement, leakage, uh, corruption. What can guarantee us that will not happen when we operate massive nuclear power plant? In February 2020, radioactive material cesium-137 was found in a housing complex outside of Jakarta. It was suspected to have been illegally dumped from the reactors nearby. Authorities rushed to contain the fallout. Dan karena memang namanya radioaktif, maka ya nggak bisa hanya barangnya, tapi tanahnya, bagian misalnya bangunan yang sudah tercemar dan itu juga menjadi uh, atau mengeluarkan uh, radioaktif itu juga harus diproses sehingga itulah yang kemudian dilakukan uh, pengedukan penggalian tanah di daerah tersebut yang kemudian itu menjadi bagian dari limbah yang harus diproses dengan proses limbah radioaktif dan itu sudah dilakukan secara penuh dan kemudian itu di, dibuang di mana kan pertanyaannya gitu ya Nah, tanah itu dibuang, oh, nggak boleh dibuang karena itu sebetulnya bagian dari limbah radioaktif yang di dalam konteks tanggung jawab pengelolaan limbah juga dilakukan pada saat itu di Batan dan sekarang dilakukan oleh BRIN. Jadi itu semua digali dan kemudian dimasukkan di dalam satu kontainer yang memang sudah uh, sesuai dengan spesifikasi dan itu disimpan di pusat uh, limbah radioaktif di BRIN. Itu sudah selesai masalahnya. For the opponents of nuclear power, this episode highlighted another risk in harnessing the atom. The treatment of radioactive waste. So Indonesia has been using radioactive materials for various uses all these years, right? Whether it is in the industry or for medical purposes or research and education. So the country actually already has the capacity to treat nuclear waste. In the event that Indonesia has to bury it somewhere in the country as a final repository, it will have to get approval from the House of Representatives before depositing the spent fuel or the waste in the earth. We haven't seen any convincing plan from the government on how to manage nuclear waste in the future. I mean, you, when you operate nuclear power plants, there is no room for errors. When corruption takes place, then you have full rooms of error. You know, uh, you have loopholes. You compromise things, you compromise protocols, you compromise standards, you, comp you compromise security standards, safety standards. Then, then we're all at risk. But despite Greenpeace's misgivings, Surveys show that Indonesians are positive on nuclear power. Since Fukushima, public support has steadily climbed. Dari kepala saya sih sama ya, mungkin selama ini nuklir itu uh, sesuatu yang panas, sesuatu yang meledak. Uh, mungkin dulu kan uh, bom atom nuklir Jepang sama Amerika. Uh, hanya mungkin pengetahuan orang aja mungkin yang harus ditambah ya. Orang nggak tahu yang nuklir itu selama ini yang tadi menakutkan dan segala macam. Tapi kalau pengaruhnya untuk keluar untuk apa energi mungkin 
bagus sih kalau dipakai di Indonesia daripada dipakai batu bara. Itu sih kalau kajiannya adalah bahasanya sejauh itu untuk kebaikan, saya sangat mendukung. Tetapi yang perlu dipikirin dan diantisipasi impact-nya setelah itu terjadi, impact-nya kepada masyarakat limbahnya dan hal-hal lain. Public support will be crucial if Indonesia wants to push ahead with nuclear energy. But some experts caution that sentiments are a lot more complicated than the data suggests. If you refer to surveys, national surveys that's, that ask whether um, people are actually uh, in favor of Indonesia having its nuclear power plants, then the, the survey in 2016 said that more than 77% of the respondents said yes. But when it is the respondents of the, the place where the nuclear power plants are likely to be constructed that are surveyed, then the, the response is likely to be different. They will say that not in my backyard. So far, some potential sites for Indonesia's first nuclear power plant include the Muria Peninsula in Java, Bangka Belitung Islands of Sumatra, and West Kalimantan. Tapi mana sebetulnya dari tiga itu yang paling baik gitu ya? Itu baru dari PLN-nya atau dari sisi men, bagaimana distribusi dan supply listriknya. Kita mau lihat yang yang lain dari sisi masyarakatnya, siapa yang akan membangun, siapa yang akan mengoperasikan. Artinya kita juga membutuhkan SDM yang sudah siap. Nah, SDM itu membutuhkan satu waktu untuk bagaimana memahami mengenai teknologi yang ada. It's very hard to convince uh, people uh, to to have a, a nuclear power plant built on their backyard. Um, secondly, we talk about the economic side of it. Nuclear is not cheap. One of the studies uh, suggests that there is at least one billion dollars of over budget for every single nuclear power plant that's built in the world. So there is that challenge, that when we want to build a nuclear power plant, it is costly. Um, and it takes a long time to be built. We have to be you know, frank and honest. A lot of people are raising questions because when we talk about nuclear, we're not talking something that is for five to 10 years. This is a lifetime liability. We need to have very strong regulation that is stable, that is not corrupt, and that is need to be maintained in the long run by the government. Site selection will have to consider Indonesia's location on the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire. Being close to tectonic fault lines, the archipelago is prone to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and other disasters. In December 2016, an earthquake struck Aceh, causing destruction and panic and killing more than 100 people. Nonetheless, the government insists Indonesians need not fear a Fukushima-like disaster. Jadi apa yang sudah terjadi, kalau boleh dikatakan, ya memang itu generasi yang lama. Sistem otomasinya, kemudian sistem yang sangat terkait dengan bagaimana masing-masing sensor, masing-masing data analisis yang dilakukan yang sebelumnya dengan mungkin harus menggunakan banyak sekali ya, peran dari seorang operator, itu yang kedepannya akan bisa digantikan, tapi kalau dengan mesin, dengan otomatis, dengan komputer dan sebagainya, mudah-mudahan itu bisa. Selain memang juga ada banyak sekali ya material-material baru yang ditemukan, sehingga mampu bertahan sampai suhu yang lebih tinggi, kemudian teknologi lainnya, sehingga kontrol itu juga bisa jauh, jauh sekali dibandingkan dulu. Sehingga kalau ada satu perubahan, itu bisa segera terdeteksi dengan alarm. But even if Indonesia can convince its own citizens on the safety of nuclear energy, can it assure its neighbors? It is in Indonesia's interest to maintain uh, this trajectory of advocating a nuclear uh, technology for, for peaceful purposes, instead of it going uh, nuclear, for example, for, as, as a weapon.
Sugeng Supawoto is the chairman of the Commission 7 at the House of Representatives. The Commission oversees energy, mineral resources, research and technology, as well as environmental affairs. Sugeng is a proponent of the government's bill on new and renewable energy, which includes plans for a nuclear power plant. The bill is being debated just before Indonesia hosts the G20 summit in Bali. Kita bersyukur Indonesia sebagai presidensi G20 dengan tema juga energy transition. Maka dari itu alangkah eloknya ketika ada diselenggarakan G20 Summit nanti bulan November itu kita sudah memiliki undang-undang energi baru dan energi terbarukan. Sustainable energy is on the agenda for the G20 Summit. This year's chair, Indonesia, has joined a global pledge to phase out coal. It aims to do so by 2055 when the last coal-powered plant is retired. But a decade before that, it plans to have an operational nuclear power plant. Hampir muskil tanpa PLTN. Kenapa demikian? Karena sekali lagi, untuk memenuhi kebutuhan-kebutuhan meningkat uh, listrik tadi akan dibangun PLTU. Sementara kita harus menjaga net zero emission. Nuklir adalah luncuran hampir dikatakan nol luncuran karbonnya. Kita harus paksa bangsa ini menjadi bangsa yang memang tangguh. Di mana nuklir adalah bagian dari kita untuk kesejahteraan. Karena hampir tidak ada, sekali lagi hampir tidak ada negara maju tanpa nuklir. Tanpa nuklir sebagai pembangkit listrik tenaga nuklir. Bahkan apa yang disebut dengan indeks apa, kemanusiaan, ya, indeks apa, kualitas manusia lah katakanlah. Bisa dipastikan jauh lebih bagus adalah negara-negara yang ada nuklir. To be fair, 2045 is a long time from today. We still have 24 years from today. Nuclear needs to be a long-term commitment. My worry is that Indonesia may or may not have that long-term stability and commitment to follow suit such regulations. If the country is willing to do so, if it's willing to push a lot of commitment, a lot of regulatory controls, it may be able to convince part of the public. So this is the big question. But if you ask the public next door, they will somehow link what happened with the palm oil industry, with the corruption, and with nuclear. It's unfortunate, but that's the case. That's the case that to build a nuclear industry, you need a trusted government that can maintain stability in the long run. Concerns about governance and corruption go all the way to the top. In 2014, then Minister for Energy and Mineral Resources, Jero Wachik, was arrested on charges of graft. He was eventually sentenced to four years in prison. We can have the technology, but governance problem after problems after problems, and an energy sector is not immune. We have seen big corruption cases in, 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 in energy sector. That can happen also in the operation of nuclear power plant. The risk much more, much higher than in than uh, what uh, what we have in other types of energy. When we talk about nuclear, again, it all needs to be based on prudent planning. And right now, there is a, an ongoing rush to adopt nuclear. You know, we sometimes see that some companies promote that we need to build nuclear as fast as possible. I think it needs to be re-emphasize that there is no shortcut when we talk about nuclear adoption. It needs to be a very deliberate process, a very conservative process, because countries that have been dealing with nuclear for even five decades are sometimes still struggling, both technically and also in terms of public perceptions. Indonesia not only has to convince its own populace of its readiness to run nuclear power stations, it will also have to convince its neighbors after the Fukushima disaster, radioactive particles were detected as far away as Iceland. The release of radioactive wastewater was criticized by Taiwan. Any nuclear accident on the Indonesian archipelago will impact its ASEAN neighbors. Tadi ada pertanyaan terkait dengan bagaimana dengan negara tetangga 
itu kan juga sesuatu yang sekali lagi membutuhkan satu diplomasi dan sebagainya. Itulah yang kemudian persiapan-persiapan seperti itu. Jadi sudah dilakukan sehingga kita akan memiliki tadi sharing pengalaman dari dari mitra ataupun dari kolaborasi riset yang dilakukan itu akan menambah sebetulnya kemampuan dan juga eh, antisipasi kita terhadap beragam kejadian-kejadian itu. And when any country harnesses the atom, the elephant in the room is nuclear weapons. In 2006, sanctions were imposed on Iran after it refused to halt its nuclear program. The Iranian government insisted it was for nuclear energy research. The US, however, claimed the Middle Eastern country was developing weapons of mass destruction. As it pursues its own nuclear program, the Indonesian government is quick to assert its peaceful intentions. Bahkan saya beberapa waktu lalu berkunjung juga ke Iran. Apa sih problem Iran tuh soal nuklir? Kok diembargo segala termasuk? Ternyata ya ini persoalan politik. Tapi Iran maju dengan nanoteknologinya dan sebagainya sebagainya. Inilah sebagai bangsa besar yang kita ingin besar yang memerlukan energi besar maka kita harus terus berupaya mencukupi kebutuhan-kebutuhan energinya secara paripurna. Kita tidak mau wilayah nuklir nuklir sebagai leverage dalam konteks defend dan sebagainya. Tetapi lebih pada nuklir untuk kesejahteraan. Indonesia has long been known as a strong advocate of peaceful uses of nuclear technology. It signed and ratified the NPT in the 1970s and it was the first Southeast Asian country to accede to even more rigorous verification mechanism uh, as seen in the additional protocol in 1999. Additionally, it is also a member of a Southeast Asian version of the NPT, which is a treaty on Southeast Asia, a nuclear weapon-free zone mechanism, and it also has signed and ratified the comprehensive a nuclear test ban treaty. So I would say that uh, given its track record, it is in Indonesia's interest to maintain Uh, this trajectory of advocating a nuclear uh, technology for uh, for peaceful purposes. At the Sibawesi Nuclear Research Facility in Serpong, on the outskirts of Jakarta, workers are preparing to irradiate material used to treat bone cancer patients. Apart from research into nuclear energy, the Sibawesi reactor is also used to produce radioactive material that have various applications from medicine to agriculture to industrial processes. Jadi radioisotop itu adalah uh, suatu unsur ya yang kemudian ditembak netron ya itu akan menjadi uh, radioaktif. Yang barusan diradiasi itu adalah uh, target namanya samarium ya. Samarium 152, kemudian ditembak netron menjadi Samarium 153. Itu digunakan untuk terapi kanker tulang. Samarium is used to reduce the pain in those suffering from bone cancer. For those who champion Indonesia's nuclear ambitions, Siwabesi's decades-long experience producing radioactive isotopes like samarium is proof of the country's capabilities. Nuklir bagi Indonesia dari sisi non-energi komersial memang sudah bukan uh, hal baru. Di rumah sakit semuanya teknologi nuklir sudah kita pakai untuk apa uh, dan sebagainya sebagainya. Kita punya mahasiswa perguruan tinggi UGM ada teknik nuklir ITB ada UI ada dan sebagainya sebagainya. Bahkan para uh, apa warga negara kita yang di luar negeri ahli-ahli kita di pembangkit listrik negara nuklir baik di Amerika di China di Jepang di Perancis banyak sekali itulah warga negara Indonesia. Artinya kapasitas bangsa ini bagaimana untuk mengelola nuklir sebagai pembangkit listrik tenaga nuklir sudah sangat layak. In November, the new Energy and Renewables Bill is expected to be passed in Parliament. Indonesia has taken one step closer to its nuclear energy aspirations. 
a journey that started almost 70 years ago. And it may soon have company, as more ASEAN countries develop their own nuclear roadmaps. At Siwabesi, nuclear researcher Suwoto is inspecting the reactor tank. It's filled with water to shield the uranium and keep it cool. At 58, he's two years shy of retirement. After more than three decades working here at Siwabesi, he's in the twilight of his career. But he believes Indonesia's nuclear future is bright. Kalau kita gali terus itu nanti lama persediaannya akan habis ya. Sehingga perlu ada energi alternatif tersebut. Itu sehingga sekarang sudah dilakukan penelitian yang lebih maju lagi. Sehingga sangat aman sekali. Dan mau nggak mau ya, kita harus beralih dan menyiapkan energi untuk membackup ya kekurangan listrik yang ada di dunia ini. <tuh>